All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This my guy sounds like he's probably in his very early 50s, military, and shares his story how he, like a lot of guys out there, went down the path and became a passport bro. Became a passport bro after his first marriage that, you know, he married his wife way too young and didn't work out because obviously she was up to no good, which you'll find out. And eventually joined the military and had some connections. Next thing you know, he met a great gal overseas. And turns out the stereotypes, and this happened a couple decades ago, the stereotypes were right, the positive stereotypes were right about gals overseas in certain areas not being affected by the disease of modern feminism. And he found himself a great gal. And he's had a great life with her and all that. And that'd be a good story to go over here. A One about a guy who learned, don't waste your time with the Western women, or at least most of them. And two, that you can find some happiness out there for you guys that want relationships and marriage and all that. But you have to be smart about it, realistic. And all these other qualities out there, the things that I mentioned in the stories here. So it's, it's, a, it's a story that has a happy ending, because we could use more of that. And I'll certainly emphasize that later on. And... Uh, he shares some very good tips he's learned along the way, things I talk about that could really help you guys out there are relationship guys. And even if you're not a relationship guy, it's still a good one to watch because, you, as with any of my videos, you can learn something along the way. And let's be honest here, there are a lot of things that really get the Western gals irate, and they certainly get irate when a guy leaves the country and brings back a pretty foreigner to come over here, and that's more of these harpies that are stuck with their box wine and cats. Well, I love cats, but you know what I mean that could have had a chance, but they decided to be entitled a-holes, and, well, they're alone. So it's a good story. Longer, but a good one. So it starts off, says here, Dear OSSM, I'm thinking that you may want to share a story that is quite different than most of your stories. Hey, I'm all for variety on this channel. Uh, most of the stories you cover are about how a man gets cheated on, screwed over, and ruined, and sometimes how they end up taking revenge on cheating W-H-O-R-E-S. Which, yes, they do make for entertaining experience. I'm thinking of giving a story that is on the other side of the coin. A positive one for a change. Hey, we need some positivity over here. We need stories where things work out. Sure, a good entertaining revenge story, we all enjoy that. But we'd like some happiness in this effed up world here. Welcome to the good... I appreciate... I Send the good stories in, guys. Or at least the ones that are more positive. I'll take them. Yes, there are some amazing and wonderful women out there, too, but they are hard to find. Good, I'm glad you put that because that's accurate. Sometimes you have to search far from home to find one, and you, see, and you clearly search very far, hard from, very far from home. As far as we all know, most women you'll find in the Western world are too materialistic, selfish, entitled, and lack any moral code. That sums it up. Especially when, they, you, they, when, when you uh, bring up their past. Then when you approach 30, all of a sudden, they turn to these perfect little housewives who are looking to settle down with a good man to raise a family, forgetting they have had dozens of men run through them over the past decade, and most times they've lost count of how many. Again, that sums it up. The problem with that behavior is that deep down, they miss being used in that manner and find it too difficult to change back to being monogamous. They were raised terribly and have no moral foundation. They find it nearly impossible to pair bond with only one man since they have had so many men inside them sharing DNA. Yep. I certainly made my share of mistakes as well, and I won't bore you by going into all of them with too much detail. But to sum it up, I fell for a young woman and had a couple kids with her. We got married, and she ended up cheating on me and left me for another guy. Sorry that happened, man. Your story is quite common. So I filed for divorce, and we had to figure out the co-parenting thing. Oddly enough, I do thank God for this experience because it taught me so much. Don't get me wrong, I went through hell and I was in love. And yet, you found a way to survive and move on, as all men can do. But at least, you learned something. I had my heart broken and I had to find a way to get over it. Not only that, but for the sake of my kids, I had to find a way to still have a relationship with her so we could be in our kids' lives. I didn't want the kids to suffer for what happened to us. We divorced back in 1999, and we shared custody so there was no child support. Okay, well that's good. Strangely enough, a friend of my ex-wife, who was from another country, asked me if I was interested in meeting someone from her home country. I'd be like, I just went through this crazy divorce. The last thing I need is another woman, let alone what one on the other side of the world, but whatever, I could use some entertainment. I knew back when I was a teenager, I didn't want to marry an American girl unless I found the proverbial needle in the haystack. 
then why the hell did you marry your ex? Max was also from another country, but mostly grew up in America, so her values were that of a typical American girl. Aha, there you go. So I asked her to provide me with some details. She said it was her niece, and she was in college studying to be an elementary school teacher. She was about 23 years old at the time, and she was raised in a good family. I asked her to bring me a picture, and about a week later, she did. I'm not looking for women just for fun. I'm looking for the kind of woman who I can make a wife and raise a family. I was a bit skeptical, but I'm open to anything. Dane just sucks, and trying to find wife material is nearly impossible. I want to point out that this all went down, the wife cheating, divorce, all that, happened in the late 90s when he was divorced in 1999. So, this is before, yes, there were cell phones in the late 90s, but you all remember cell phones in the late 90s. They, they were, it was shit. Just to make a phone call. That's it. There, it was not, they weren't smartphones. And there were no dating apps then. And there was, uh, were, there, were there dating apps? Actually, there was. I believe they were just getting started then. There was no social media. So, and yet, guess what? They behave like they behave now. So, once I was provided with a picture, I found her very sweet and pretty. Not crazy too hot or anything, but definitely there was something about her parents that made me take notice. As we all know, nines and tens are not the ones you wife up. You have your fun with them and you go away. Amen. And the eights are on a case-by-case basis. You can get a pretty eight because an eight, an eight will be a head turner. She walks into a room, guys notice. But uh, you definitely got to have your man card with her and lay down the law and lead. Otherwise, you know. But the nines and tens, no. They're, they're not girlfriend wife material. Not, any, not, not They never were and they certainly aren't now. This young lady, I'll call her Jenny. Jenny was what I call a diamond in the rough. I told her aunt, here is my mailing address. Have her write me if she is interested. This was in the late 2001. A couple months later, I received a letter from her. It was really innocent and reminded me of things girls would do in middle school. She couldn't email you. I mean, this is 2001 after all, but okay. It was written on colored stationery. She drew hearts all over it and even cut a design into the edges of the paper. Um... Is she 23 or 3? It was actually a bit refreshing to see something like that. She sent me all her contact information, and so I emailed her. There you go. So we were chatting almost every day, calling and video chatting as well. Okay, clearly got along. A little too much contact, in my opinion. I mean, you do have a life, my friend. Taking care of the kids, your job, hobbies and interests. You should have been talking to her every single day. But... I'm not a dating coach, but I, I most certainly am not a fucking dating coach. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a realistic, pers- a realistic pointers here and there about things like that. This is a pretty tough time for me due to what happened on 9-11, so work was scarce. And since I had so much responsibility when I was fresh out of high school with having kids early and getting married, I never had time to go to college or anything to secure a future. So obviously he married young. So I decided to make a big move and join the military. No judgments, please. I love my country and always felt obliged to serve and be a part of something greater than myself. You're not getting any judgments from me and you're not going to get judgments from the majority out there. I respect you and I'm glad that you decided to join the service and serve a country. Never apologize for loving your country. And anybody, because we got a whole lot of people out there that right now hate their country. And that pisses me off to no end. It was a hard, and I might add, you can have reasons to be fed up with elements and things of your country, but well, you, I think you guys get the point. It was hard It was hard as hell to leave my kids, but it was something I had to do in order to get myself into a position where a future was in the cards for me. Men are known to sacrifice their comforts for a better future for their kids. As for me, I grew up poor, or very poor, and worked through most of high school to ensure I had money in my pocket for food, clothing, and anything else I needed. So this was my way of breaking the bonds of poverty and gave myself and my kids some kind of future. <clears throat> okay, so you were scraping by before. So this is an attempt to, through the service and what could come from that, provide a better life. I respect that, man. And I'm sure it wasn't hard to lead the kids. I joined the Navy in 2002, and at least I had Jenny to write to about during basic training and in my following, following on school to train for the job that I was going to do for the military. I got stationed in Southern California. I was stationed on shore, so I didn't get the chance to travel on board a ship and and see the world just yet. Jenny was from the Philippines, and after a couple years, the Navy told me I had to go overseas next. 
They gave me three options to choose from, and my next duty station was in Japan. Okay, what an adventure. After doing some research, I made my decision, and they gave me my orders. I checked into my, my new day, duty station in 2005, so we've really fast forward in time here. Unless you messed up the date. And now Jenny and I had a real chance of meeting in person. By this time, she had already graduated, received her teaching license, and been teaching for two years. By the time I reached Japan, I was already 28 years old. Okay, so it sounds like you joined the Na you enlisted in the Navy when you were 25, I guess. I was already 28, so I wasn't looking to whore around too much. I was ready to find out if Jenny was really worth the wait in all this effort. Yeah, you, it's a different perspective for you at that point. 28 years old, a couple kids, you really know what matters now. And whoring around ain't it. I'm sure all the guys you're with wanted to whore around as much as can be. So I told Jenny from the beginning that I can't make you any promises because I haven't seen you in person. You're on the other side of the world, and I don't even know if I will even get the chance to meet you in person. As for her, she understood that, but fell for me pretty hard. Every time we were going to meet or to meet to chat, she would always make the trip to the local internet cafe and pay for the time to use a computer. Like clockwork, she was always there, never any excuses. Internet cafes, I remember those days. I spent a month in London in 2005. I was the one right down the street I was using. And no, she never asked me for any money or anything like that. Just my time was enough for her. That's a big thing. A lot of scams come from the Philippines. You know, these girls hitting up these guys. And these guys start building relationships with them. And they're, they're funding their lifestyles. These girls probably talk to 10 different guys from the U.S. Lonely guys and send them money. It's crazy. So I'm glad she never asked you for money. Never sent it to her. Now that was in Japan. Now that I was in Japan, we were in the same time zone with maybe one hour difference. When the video chat would come up, you could see the joy in her face to see me, and she would light up. There was something extremely wholesome and genuine about her. Great. It's nice to have a girl that's enthusiastic about talking to you. I can usually spot BS, but with her, not, there was none of that. Every waking moment with her, <clears throat> every uh, waking moment for her was thinking of me and the anticipation of meeting in person. Then came from the then. This came from the other relatives and friends of hers. Plus, everyone told me she had the biggest heart and she just loved me to death. Well, let's not get carried away and never met yet. I know you've been pen pals and video chat pen pals for a few years. And I, and you said her aunt is the one that introduced you to. So there's the connection there. But again, it's that's all great until you meet in person. I believe that a woman must be more than looks. That is why I don't mind that she was a 10. She was a bit skinny, smaller chest, and even her teeth were not perfectly straight. That is why I said a diamond <clears throat> in the rough. Pretty, but you can never expect perfection. It does not exist. Getting her braces is easy, and she'll put on a few pounds in America, but she's naturally skinny, so I don't anticipate her ever getting fat. Well, there you go. You know, looks, we're all going to age, guys. Even the guys. And you make the jokes about men age like Sean Connery, women age like Sean Connery. But we're all going to fucking age. You know, and if you got a gal that is a great personality, I mean, really a great personality, fun, positive attitude, loyal, supportive, she takes care of herself given her age. Yeah, she's not going to look, when she's in her 40s, she's not going to look like she did in her 20s, but still, she looks darn good for her age. And it's her character and personality, the diamond in the rough, because there are some good ones out there, in spite of what many of you think. But if she has a smoking hot body and face, but she has a rotten personality, that body is going to fade over time too, but that, per that rotten personality will last a lifetime. A lot of these young gals, the only card they have to play is their body and looks, and those are going to go. He says here, the boobs. Whatever, it was not a deal breaker. Okay, she has small boobs. I know, I'll be, I know I'll be perfectly happy with her physically, but more importantly, looks will fade. But the quality of a woman will not. She was definitely wife material, and I, and I knew if I could make this work, then I think I will have a pretty good future. Most guys end up with a woman who is giving up when they first meet. Once they've locked you down, the sex stops, she gets fat, cuts your hair short, and you're stuck with a sexless hell of a marriage. Pretty much. Filipino wives are known to love, love pleasing their man, great cooks, and if you find the really good ones, fiercely loyal. She turned out to be all of that. Yes, you can find the bad ones too. I've known many in my day, but I was still keeping my fingers crossed for this one and praying she's as good as I was hoping. Filipino women were raised to be wives and mothers. Well, let's hope that feminism doesn't stick their claws 
in the Philippines and in those Asian countries where you still have some feminine women there. When you find out what they prioritize, this will tell you a lot about who that you are considering making your wife. She was very family oriented and couldn't wait to start a family. Even when I told her that if we were uh, married, there was no telling where I might get stationed next. She simply replied, I'll go anywhere with you go as long as we are together. I know words are just words, so I was waiting to see some action. Yeah, okay. We shall see. The next step was to have her visit Japan, and we will see if this is just a fantasy or if this is for real. Well, <clears throat> we're all at the edge of our seats, bro, to see how this turns out. If I was at work and there was a room inspection, she would be found out, kicking her off the base permanently, and I would get in a lot of trouble. As luck would have it, one of her friend's sisters was living in the same area of Japan where I was stationed, and she was married to a local Japanese guy. Ah, oh, how... What a, what a deal. So we made arrangements to have Jenny stay at her place when I was working, and on the days I had off, she would stay with me. So you missed the part where he actually... You kind of missed the part where he actually met her for the first time, and like, okay, you are who you are, who you say you are, who you're showing up on camera, but okay. School was out for the year in the Philippines, so she didn't have to work and she put in the resignation, so she didn't have t a timeline to return. I was really, It was really easy for her to get a visa to Japan, so I got her a ticket, and she was on her way. Okay, you're setting things up to meet her and all that. Our first meeting was great. She was so nervous and shy, but it take, didn't take long for her to settle in. Once we got her into her friend's place and did all the introductions, she came to stay with me for the next couple days. I think it was a long time coming, and she was quite ready. She couldn't keep her hands off me. You stud. Well, you've been talking for years, for heaven's sake. Lots and lots of times a week. Sometimes every day, which is too much, but fine. And so, obviously, you know, you, at least in terms of communication, seem to know each other. But this still is different when you're in person. We were going at it three to five times a day. Well, she's making a good first impression. Now, can she cook? When we weren't doing that, she would spend her time, spare time cleaning the common area and the bathroom, organizing things, and taking care of the place. It was a nice change because I never had anyone do those things for me like that. Yeah, your former ex-wife, the American, she ain't going to do that shit for you. I showed her around and got her acquainted with Japanese life. She turned out to be extremely nurturing and loving. I could tell in a person that she was the real deal. She couldn't stay long, but after a few months, her visa was expiring. I felt serious by marrying her. She was everything I'd wanted in a wife and more. Well, again, I mean, yeah, you've only been with her physically for a few months, and she's certainly on her best behavior, but you've been talking to her for years, you know? Soon after this, I gained another rank and was allowed to move off by, off base. I got a house overlooking the ocean and, a, and, and about 15 minutes from that base. Jenny tried to get another visa, but was denied, probably because it was such a short time after the old one expired. The Japanese embassy could deny visas for any or no reason. She was going to have to wait another six months to apply for another with no guarantee of acceptance. That's tough, man. So I went to the Philippines to visit her and see her family in her hometown where she grew up. Good idea. Before you think of this marriage thing, you know, see her family. Let me tell you, going there was an eye-opener for me. If you've never been to a third world country, there are things I'll be, you'll be blown away with. The absolute poverty so many people live in is just sad. When being driven to her apartment, I asked what I was looking at, and her aunt said, those are squatters. I didn't even know what a squatter was at that time. But there were entire neighborhoods of makeshift houses that went on for miles of just dirt poor people living on the street. Now this, uh, here you have squatters that take over people's homes, and the people that do that should be, well, I'm sure you all can imagine what I, what I would do to those that go just break into people's homes and take over. But you know who's worse than squatters? the politicians that allow them to do this type of crap. Far worse than the modern-day tent cities you see in metropolitan cities. We went by a city dump, and I saw children, some completely nude. I mean, with, without one item of clothing on, walking in the dump, foraging for food. Oh my God, that's terrible. I was shocked. I also got angry thinking of all the people in our own country complaining that they were so poor and didn't have nothing. Give me a break. They all need a little perspective. I ran for another day. Anyway, man, I agree. <clears throat> Jenny grew up poor, really poor. When I went to her hometown, they, they called it a province there. Going to her province, I saw people living in houses made of sticks. I mean like the second little piggy's house. When she showed me her parents' home, she said, This is my parents' home. This is where I grew up. Her parents lived in a stick house with dirt floors, no windows, no outhouse, and a well you had to pump for water. Holy crap. 
So you can see, well, you can see why these gals over there, and there's a stereotype for this, <clears throat> do anything to get an American man and get the hell out of there. So we can be understandably skeptical in this whole situation here, but I know how this goes, and he got himself a good girl. It gave me a real perspective on her life and how lucky I was growing up where I did. My dad always told me, be, be, be happy you were born in this country. But what really amazed me is to see how happy everyone was, how kind they were, how welcoming they were to me. I really got to know why Jenny was the way she was. Before, I wasn't ready to marry her until I really knew more about her and this trip I got to see the real her. Humble, sweet, very family-oriented, and I was sure I was going to marry this woman and bring her into my world. Okay. Well, yeah, you met her family. And I am, I'm sure they were on their best behavior for you. And we can be skeptical and say, of course, so they, they'd marry, you'd marry her da their daughter and their life would benefit and all that. I mean, let's be honest here, but they obviously were good people and they loved her and she had a good family. These are important things. A few months later, I came back and we got married. Good luck. It was a simple ceremony and we had a great time. Jenny applied for a new visa and now she was in a different status and changed her last name. Because she was going to be with her husband, they gave her the visa and she arrived soon after. Because she's not a military wife, the Navy gave her what is called a SOFA status, S-O-F-A status, which simply means she didn't have to leave. They sponsored her to live in Japan with me. We just went through the immigration process to get her a visa to America, and we had plenty of time to do that. By, by the time I was rotated back to the States, she just came along with me, no problems. <clears throat> My family absolutely loved her. Our son was born in Japan there, and by the time that he got a chance to meet his two older brothers, they all got along great. Well, that's awesome. Thank God for that. You know, And obviously during this whole time period, you maintain a close communication with your boys back in the States. You know, their, their mother is an a-hole, and I'm sorry they were stuck with her, but you had to do what you had to do. <clears throat> I even set up her sister with another Navy friend of mine and her best friend with another Navy friend as well. Everyone is still married to this day, and they have several children together. Wow. Filipinos seem to be everywhere. So she was able to meet and befriend many of her fellow country folk and was able to adjust to American life rather easily. Well, if you, if you go from living in shit to dirt floors, no windows, sticks for the walls, to coming over here, darn right you're going to adapt pretty easily. Like, all right, I'm in heaven. After some time, we were able to even purchase a condo in the Philippines and some beachfront property in her province to build on that. What did that cost you? $2,000? Jesus. I'm getting closer to retirement age now, and I do plan to spend at least part of the year, every year, out there enjoying the fruits of my labor. Jenny became a U.S. citizen in 2011. And with our blue passports, we have traveled to at least 20 countries around the world together. Wow, what an adventure. I do think you get to know a lot about a person from traveling with them. We seem to be great partners. Since she is frugal, we've taken these trips by trying to maximize our enjoyment while not breaking the bank. Good. That's a big sign for a good wife. Frugal. Don't piss away money. Don't get materialistic. But be careful when she starts hanging around other American women. They start rubbing off on her. If there's a place where you can haggle for a better price, then she's a whiz at that. I just sit back and let her do her magic. Because it's natural to them. I hope to add a few pieces of advice as well to my story to hopefully help others out there who are looking for the right kind of gal and relationship. Relationships that are going to last, <clears throat> to last take time. Jen and I knew each other for years before we met, and I know that is not ideal. However, trust is so important, and that is something that is built over time. Yeah, you didn't meet her until years after talking to her, but you were talking to her so much. And honestly, after talking to her for so, as long as you did before meeting her, if the person she was showing on camera and the way she was acting was, if that was all BS, eventually it would come out. He says, Ronald Reagan used to say, trust but verify. I will give you the benefit of the doubt when I first meet someone. But if you give me a reason not to trust you, then good luck trying to regain my trust. Jenny had my trust and I had hers. As time went on, she showed me time and time again that she was the right kind of woman. Loyal, honest, and true with the proper values, just like I anticipated. I got Jenny the braces to straighten her teeth when we returned to the States. And the American diet put a few pounds on her, so she got some nice curves. After our three children, she decided to get a boob job, and she has it all. Hey! Trust me, if you polish a diamond, it really shines. 
There are a ton of guys who try to hit on her now, but she was never shown any interest in any of that. Her focus is always on her husband and her family. Wonderful. That's the way it should be. How hard is that? Another piece of advice I want to give is that if you make your relationship too good to leave, then your partner will have no reason to, or even try to justify the relationship. Yeah, well, many a guys have tried to make their relationship and marriage too good to want the wife to leave. That doesn't mean she's not going to fuck it up. I mean, this whole channel's built upon stories like that to help guys be aware. You know, it just worked for you. That even goes for me. If I tried to hump some sweet piece of ass just for fun, how much would I be losing? So I don't give her any reason to be suspicious. Jenny decided not to work as a teacher here in the U.S. She now works in a place where she has to dress up and look good while she makes great money and tips. Nothing sexual. <laughs> Going with the trust but verifying thing, I do keep a close eye on her. After so many years, I'm always looking for a change in patterns. Another piece of advice. Once you know the daily routines and patterns, if there is some break in the pattern, you need to look closer into that. Uh, there should always be a valid reason for the break in pattern, and there should never be a reason for them trying to hide anything. Good dude. I'm glad after all these years, still, and how great she was in the beginning, and the family, and all that, you're still paying attention. You're looking for red flags. You can't ever stop looking, guys. Ever. And I might add laying down the law when she has a bad day and gets a little bitchy. <clears throat> when my wife goes to work, I know many of her co-workers, and they can't keep their mouths shut if there is any gossip to spread. Of course they can't keep their mouths shut. Nothing spreads more than a bunch of women gossiping, clucking like hens. So if there were, there were any funny business going on at her work, I would find out. What a, he says, what about after work? She's always consistent if she gets off at midnight. 12.30, she's walking in the door. If she gets off at 2, she walks in the door at 2.30. If there's any deviation from that, I will start inquiring about it. But thankfully, there are only times she was late coming home. She was asked to work overtime, and yes, I did see the overtime on her pay stub. Good. Trust but verify. I want to know what the hell she does if she's getting out at midnight or sometimes 2 a.m. Maybe she's the manager of a restaurant or bar or something, which means that there's dudes constantly around her, checking her out, hitting on her, everything, even if she's, you know, at this point, obviously, 40s or something like that, 50s. I think in her culture and other cultures where traditional families and values are instilled in their people, there's a big sense of shame for bad behavior. So cheating is not even a thing that crosses her mind. I wouldn't go that far, but man, you can't tell me she hasn't seen some dudes that were attractive or tried to hit on her or everything, but even though... You know, she found a dude attractive. Yeah, okay, maybe she didn't cross her mind, but I'm sure she found dudes attractive. She's a human being. You know, obviously you found women that are attractive too, but you didn't do anything about it. She knows her friends and family would scorn her for it. Besides, she has one hell of a guilty conscience, and she's a terrible liar. If anything ever happened, she would, wouldn't even be able, able to look at me. She even feels guilty if she has to call into work and she's not actually sick. She says, what if they find out? She's hilarious sometimes. It's really cute. As for her friends, another piece of advice, who are her friends? It's always a good idea to know who her friends are. People tend to mimic the behavior of their friends and those who they hang around. If she has a bunch of single party girlfriends she wants to hang around with, put a stop to that right away. Correct. If she's a married woman with kids and all that, she should be hanging out with other women like that. Not a bunch of single gals or divorced single women that are out going to the club and the bar every weekend. That's not going to work. If she insists on going out with them, go with them. If they refuse, you put your foot down and tell her she can't go. Period. It's all about respect for you and for her. Most of the friends she has are married and we all know each other pretty well. I'm able to look through her phone and she sees mine. In this kind of relationship, you have to be, be that open with each other. I know it takes time for that, but if you're going to commit, you have to commit. Exactly. And by the way, just because she's around a bunch of married women doesn't mean married women aren't going to cheat or pull some bullshit, so you still have to pay attention. There come the sirens. I knew I couldn't do this long-ass video. That's some sirens coming up. Jay and I have been married for 18 years now, and we rarely fight. I think the only time I got infuriated with her was about money, <clears throat> and not what you might think. For Mother's Day one year, I wanted to make, make up for the crappy Valentine's Day I gave her a few months earlier. So I decided to give her a spa day. I think most of us would agree that this is a damn good gift. <laughs> for who? Women or dudes? I wouldn't think that was a great gift. I planned to have her nails done with a, with a facial and then ha to have the salon do whatever she wanted with her hair, cut, color, etc. <clears throat> I was feeling pretty proud of myself. I made the appointment and made it a surprise. When we arrived, she had a bad attitude about the whole thing. 
because she grew up poor. She never had, in her, she never in her life had a facial or even paid another person to do her nails before. She always did her own nails, and they were done by a friend or relative. So the first part of the spa day, she told them that she wanted to cancel it, and I was furious. Yeah, because she thought this was just ridiculous. We still had an hour to wait for her salon appointment, so we fought the whole time in the car. She wanted to get her hair done at J.C. Penney salon like her friend did earlier in the week. She said it only cost her $65. I told her, I don't give a damn about the money. I'm doing this for you. Well, I like the fact that she doesn't want to piss away money on a spa day or anything like that. That's a dream to have a gal that doesn't want to piss away their money on bullshit. I mean, she did get a boob job after all, but hey, she did that to make you happy. So I talked her into doing the salon appointment, and she was so angry about the cost. Long story short, she was pissed off because I was going to spend too much money on her. <laughs> Can you imagine that coming from a typical American girl? No, American girls get pissed off when you don't spend, in their opinion, enough money on them. I think the kind of woman who tells you not to spend money on her, this is the one you should spoil because they actually deserve it. Not like these entitled bitches who think you need to spend $500 on the first date for the privilege to be in their presence. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. That's why I tell you guys, first date, a drink. Tea, coffee, a beer if you drink alcohol, a margarita, or just a stroll in the city if it's a nice city and there aren't bums everywhere and people shooting up or anything like that. Park, whatever. Something casual. Hot cocoa walking through the park looking at the ducks. And if she doesn't like it and she wants you to spend all this money on her, it tells you everything you need to know. And you're going to have some gals that are going to turn you down, guys, when you propose the one drink thing. Jenny is the one I've taken all over the world, raised a family with, created a ton of great memories with, and she's completely worth worth it. She has supported me through the military, my military career, and even with my post-military goals. Completely beautiful inside and out. I'll share pictures so you know what I mean. I'll just keep it, you just keep it to yourself. I think she actually has gotten better looking with age. I know this sounds crazy, but it's true. My biggest fear is I will have to send in a follow-up to tell you how I lost everything. Shit, that better not happen. Yeah, I hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, you sent a picture. She's cute. I do enjoy your content, and I know what you what you do serves a purpose. If there's if uh, it is there to help teach men, even women, what to do and what not to do in a relationship. I'm hoping that this story will also serve a purpose that there is hope. Just sometimes you have to look outside your area to find it. Outside your area, he looked on the other side of the fucking world. Most men are looking for a traditional woman to marry and raise a family with. So don't settle for second best. Find someone with the values you're looking for. Well, here's the thing. A lot of guys are becoming passport bros. And it doesn't mean every single gal from another country is going to behave like what he described here. But the odds are more in their favor. So if American women out there are pissed off that men are going off overseas to find wives and all that, well, they better get their fucking act together. My two sons from my first marriage followed my footsteps, <clears throat> serving our country as well. They're doing great, and I'm so proud of them. Well, shout out to your sons. I thank them for their service. The kids with Jenny are doing great, and our oldest is graduating high school next year. No plans for the military, but we will see what the future holds. Well, you never know. To wrap it all up, the first and most difficult part of finding your special woman is to find the right one. It seems darn near impossible sometimes, but there are some good ones out there. If that means you get your passport and go looking for it, so be it. The second part, and maybe even more difficult than the first, is to maintain the relationship. Yeah, you may get a chick initially, but then you got to handle yourself properly. And handle her when it's necessary. It's hard work to do, but as men, we have no problem maintaining what we built. Just be sure it's founded on a good, solid foundation. We're happy to put in the work if the woman is worth it. Good luck to all you out there. I hope you find a woman out there. If not, enjoy whoring around until you do. Thanks for your time. I am looking forward to reading the comments on this one. Well... There are a lot of guys that watch this channel. I can guarantee you they have zero interest. Not only in marriage, but even relationships at all. And you cannot blame them. Whether they're guys that have been in bad relationships, guys that have been married and divorced, been there, done that, not doing that again. Or young guys that see what is out there in today's world. But there are also a lot of guys that watch the channel, whether you want to admit it or not, that are relationship guys. Would like a family one day and the kids and all that. So... Yes, you do give them hope. And it may mean they have to get, get on a fucking plane and go around the world and do some travel and everything. And even then, it doesn't guarantee anything because there's no guarantees in life. So, and I, I do stand by this, that not all women are the devil incarnate. It's just that a lot of Western women are in varying degrees. So you got to be very careful 
and you got to do your homework. And I agree with that. Stay, don't even waste your time in the relationship from the nines and the tens. And uh, you look for very important things because as time goes on, all of us, including men, our looks are going to fade. Fuck. My hair is starting to go gray on the sides. I'm starting to bald up top. I don't know what the fucking Florida water has done to me here, but clearly it's starting to go. You know, I'm not as jacked as I once was when I was younger. It is what it is. You know, I could, I could improve things, but I'm now spending more time dedicated to my business than the gym six days a week. And I understand that. But I think I have a decent person. Well, okay. I think I have a decent personality. I think a lot of people he either hate my guts or really like me one way or another. But the point is, met, looks are going to fade. But you still do darn well, work hard with what you have, different age ranges. And so a woman, she, uh, if she can look smoking hot when she's younger, but if she has a rotten personality, the looks are going to fade, but that personality, that shit, is going to last the test of time. A woman that is kind and loving and supportive and all the good qualities you have, yeah, she's going to age, not look as good as she did in her 20s, but if she takes care of herself, looks good for her age, and that good personality carries on, there you go. So you guys just got to do your homework and not be stupid about it. And trust but verify, lay down the law, lead the relationship, act like a fucking man, you know the drill, and hopefully you'll be all right. So there you go, guys. Our passport broke here, and he's very happy. Good for you, sir. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Make sure you like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.